that I, and I know that in his presence, I can cast all my cares on him and all my burdens and, and lay it at his feet because he cares for me. And he longs to hear me cry to him and to worship his name. So tonight, I just want to encourage you. It's just been on my heart to this week to just acknowledge the presence of the Lord and whatever we're dealing with, whatever we're walking through, wherever we may go, to just acknowledge the presence of the Lord because when you acknowledge his presence, he begins to reveal himself to you. So if you just want to go ahead and uh, stand up on your feet, let's just go ahead and enter into a time of worship. Just acknowledge his presence in this place. Lord, we acknowledge you in this place. We acknowledge your goodness We acknowledge your grace and your mercy. We acknowledge who you are. You're a holy God and we worship you. We exalt your name above every other name. We declare that you are worthy, God. So we put our focus and our gaze upon you right now in this moment, Lord. We lay everything aside and we focus on the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Come have your way and speak to us in this place.
great you are. One more time, say how great, say how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Please go ahead and lift your voice, church. Thank you, Jesus. How great, how great, how great, how great, how great is your God tonight. How great, how awesome, how mighty, how excellent, how magnificent, how powerful. Oh, the Lord our God is a conquering foe. He's a all-consuming fire. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I just need somebody that'll magnify the Lord with me and let's exalt His. You may have had a horrible week. You may have had a tough day, but if you'll begin to call down the presence of the Lord and build Him a platform of praise, He said, I'll come and inhabit your praise. I'll come and dwell in tabernacle with you. Hallelujah. For I dwell in the midst of the praises of my people. 
Hallelujah. Oh, Father, give us heaven's perspective tonight. Let us see the way that you see it. Let us see it and perceive. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Breathe upon us, Holy Ghost. Breathe upon us, Holy Spirit. With fresh, fresh wind and fresh fire. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see. How great, how great is our God. Let the world see how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see. How great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus.
Jesus, you are here. You are
Jesus washes me The blood of Jesus shed for me What a sacrifice The sin my life All the blood It is my victory
service is a test to see if you're ready for spiritual warfare. See if you're ready to fight the good fight of faith. See if you're ready to take on demons, serpents, scorpions. See, the enemy decided that because Jesus had such a wonderful day on Sunday, he's going to try to launch him a counterattack. But he's 
already defeated, so we just need to keep we need to keep him in the place where he's supposed to be. Defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. Question is, can you stay focused on the Holy Ghost long enough and can you flow in the Holy Ghost? Until the Holy Spirit reveals what He's doing among you. I'm still in training as your preacher. I, I have to learn to stay in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Not get ahead of Him, not lag behind Him. Stay in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. This takes a little time. Takes a little time. Takes sacrifice. But do you want to know Him? Do you want to know Him? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. sets you free, you ought to be free, huh? Free indeed. Hallelujah. I, I want to give you a word the Lord gave me. Give you Scripture, please. 
Ephesians chapter 4. The whole chapter is 32 verses long. and uh, I would read the whole thing, but you would get lost in the, in the detail of it. But there is one verse of Scripture that the Lord gave me as we were worshiping tonight. And it, at the time, it seemed so strange to my spirit that I did not did not want to even go there. I just did not want to go there. I said, Lord, surely you've missed it. I wanted to talk about the sweet Holy Ghost tonight and the seal of the Holy Ghost upon the lives of we believers. And then the Lord just shifts the whole thing and says, oh, no, there's something I need to deal with tonight, and I want to deal with it. And it's going to take the Holy Ghost to deal with it. <laughs> so I said, okay, God, I've learned not to argue with the Holy Spirit. You don't want to do that. You'll lose every time, so just don't even go there. So, verse 27, verse 27 of Ephesians 4. Ooh, now you know why I didn't want to go there. I just wanted to talk about the power of the Holy Ghost. Young people, for some reason, you are, you are the love of the Father's life. I mean, you've got everything going for you. And for some reason, I just have felt in this whole meeting tonight unusually drawn to you. Uh, I'm drawn for several reasons. One, I'm, I'm drawn by the Holy Spirit, but I'm, I'm drawn by this insatiable desire for the Holy Spirit to, to captivate your hearts and minds uh, to, to the degree that what you got to sit here and observe tonight, even though some of you may have disconnected or maybe you didn't understand, I don't want to, I don't want to come across as I've been wrestling in my spirit with how to say this to you that it might be effective and it might find a place uh, in your spirit, that I don't want to sound accusatory, to sound critical of, of you, because many times I know when I was a teenager, adults would talk down to us. I would be on the same plane where you are, and I would just challenge you, just to say to you that the Father is so in love with you, Jesus is so in love with you, that He has so many wonderful things available for you that that if you will take advantage of it, here's what the Holy Spirit said to me as we were worshiping tonight, that if pastor, if, if you will if you will just challenge them to really go after the heart of God and live in the presence of Jesus, you need not have another bad day in your life For the, if you'll learn to get in the flow of the I'm just telling you, the flow of the Holy Spirit, if you just if you just learn. And see, part of the learning was what went on here tonight. I, I had no idea when I came up here because I'd already studied and prepared uh, for, for something that I sensed that, that the Lord wanted us to, to share. And in the midst of, the, of our worship, the Holy Spirit just shifted the whole atmosphere. Okay? What I mean by flow is this, learning to flow. Holy Spirit changes the atmosphere. You don't have to be told. You shift. You, under, you, you begin to get an awareness, an awareness that something is happening around you and about you. You don't, you don't have to be told, come on, young people, let's do this. Okay? It's, it's, and adults, thank you. Okay? Going with it. God, the reason the test was that the Holy Spirit was challenging you needed to be an example. How are they going to know how to flow if we don't have mature believers in the body that will know that there's a shift in the atmosphere and the presence of the Lord has shown up in this place for divine purposes, okay? All right? What I want to do is get you out of the... I want to get you out of the academic classroom, get you to the school of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Where the... Where, where the, we're just caught, we're, we're just communicating on a horizontal plane. 
Okay? All right, look up at the chalkboard, kids. Look up at the look up here. Here's what we're, we're teaching you. Did you get this problem? Do you, do you understand this scientific uh, fact? And, and we got to get only connected on a horizontal plane. The school of the Spirit wants to connect you on a vertical plane. This is the way. He wants you to go this way. You have to go this way before you can go this way. You can't until you go vertical and you and God connect. You can't you can't really connect with from heart to heart. You got to connect. You got to connect spirit to spirit. Okay, and so he wants to get you in the he wants to get you in the school of the Holy Spirit, so that vertically, when you sense His presence, that you just that your spirit nature is so become so sensitized and so awakened to the things of God that you just enter in. Because what the Holy Spirit was doing was inviting you. What Aubrey was doing with, with, with leading us in worship, God always invites. He doesn't have a whip and say, I'm going to beat you into my presence. No, He doesn't do that. He says, here I am. Come. Whosoever will, let him come. There's waters of life here for you. If you'll drink, you'll live. If you'll drink this, you'll live. If you don't drink it, if you don't drink the waters of life, you'll die. You'll die. You'll die spiritually. Okay? And that's what that's the school of the spirit. He's making you, he's making you alive. And you can't resist him anymore. You, you're 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 already in. You're already in to it. You can't resist him. He's He's so got you. You're had. You're captivated by His presence. You can run, but you can't hide. You can't hide anymore. Okay? Because He's called you. So when the atmosphere shifts, go with it. Don't resist it. Go with it. Enter, just go in it. Get in it. Enjoy Him. Okay? I mean, you don't have to go. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, it's like, go this way. <laughs> like you're just so in love with it. Okay? I mean, it, it's, it's, and, and here's why. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Because he'll he'll find a place to hide in the life of an adult as quick as he will in you as a teen. And you're even more vulnerable because you because of your innocence. And he'll overtake you. So you can't flirt with him. You can't play around with him. You can't even joke with him. Okay, because I know it's real popular right now. Everybody, the, the big thing that's running among among teens, and some of the steps going viral on YouTube, pranking. We're pranking. We want to prank. Okay, I was talking with a guy, a, a, a student yesterday. I said, "Why'd you do it?" Well, I just did it for a joke. Bad choice. Bad joke. Not good. Okay, why? Because it gave entrance for the enemy. It gave entrance. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give him no opportunity to do what? To tempt you, to overtake you, to deceive you, to try you. Just don't do it. Just don't go there. Okay? Don't get don't get Samson mentality. Oh, I'm strong. I can overcome this. I can handle this. The enemy is a master of deception. And when he makes any of us think, preachers fall every day. Why? They left room for the devil. Give him no room. No place. You don't joke with this. You don't play around with this. Don't, just don't do it. Don't go there. Stay sharp in the spirit. 
Stay strong in the Spirit. Stay prayed up in the Spirit. Worship. Live in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. What is the Spirit? Some of us think it's, oh, this is so mystical. No. The flow of the Holy Spirit is His presence. Where His presence is. And you have opportunity at His invitation at any time you, you desire. Enter in. Just go in there. And live in His presence. Learn to enjoy Him. If you've learned to enjoy one another, learn to enjoy the presence of Jesus. Because I'm telling you, if you'll learn that, He'll teach you some things. You, you have a difficulty in, in school academically? Ask Him. He'll teach you some things. He'll show you some things. He'll impart some knowledge and some and, and wisdom into your life and your spirit. But don't play with the devil. It's you might as well go play with fire. Okay? Because if you play with it long enough, it's gonna burn. It'll burn. So just don't do it. That the, the word of the I didn't I didn't even want to go there with that tonight. Okay? Adults, don't play with it. Don't play with the enemy. Okay? Why? Why is this important? Because the Holy Spirit, the test in that was, are we growing up in Christ? Every opportunity that God gives us in a worship setting like this, and even when we're out as the diaspora dispersed into the community to be light and salt, is an opportunity for the Father to build faith and to mature us as believers. Okay? Because our mission is to set the captive free. All right? You're free. If the sun sets you free, you've been set free to free others. Right? Okay? So don't get locked up in this stuff because the enemy is subtle. He'll get into us and we think we're doing something so right spiritually. Okay? But pride can get in. The wrong motive it's not pure. It, 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 it needs to stay, stay sanctified. Sanctification is a process. And he's going to continually sanctify you. He'll purify the sons of Levi. Your sons of Levi. You're called out of the darkness of this world. You're kings and priests unto our God. To do what? Operate in the authority of what was purchased for you at the cross. And now Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he made good on it and said, I'm going back to the Father and I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. And he's the guarantor. He makes good on the guarantee. So get full of the power of God. And don't give a foothold to the devil. You pull down imaginations. You pull down strongholds. You pull down every high thing. That's attitude. Well, I don't need that. I don't need what the preacher's preaching tonight. That's a high thing. It's a wrong attitude. Okay? Well, that's not for me. That's for those other inventory, that, the other inventory bunch. No, it's for all of us. Because scripture, the scriptural admonishment is that those of us that think we stand take heed as we fall. Take heed. Give the more earnest heed as you see the day of the Lord approaching. The nearness of the coming of Jesus is at the door. It's at hand. He gave us all kinds of examples. He gave us the example of the fig tree. He gave us the example of the five wise virgins and the five foolish. And he said, be ready. Don't be caught not bearing fruit. Don't be caught with no oil in your lamp. Be ready. So you can't let the devil in. You, you can't entertain his Tommy Rock. I dated myself. It's an old expression. Some of you will know what I mean. Just don't go there. Alright? Live in his presence. That's why this that's why this worship thing tonight. And and there was some 
Did y'all sense the shit? You, did you get a hold of the shit? Okay. Young people, the Holy Spirit will know you've got it when nobody has to ask you to participate. You just get in the flow. All right. You get that? You just you you've been invited. Okay. Nobody has to say, okay, come on, young people. We know you're here. Let's do something. Besides. Okay. You get the invitation. Just go get in the flow. Let's go. I just wonder, I'm just challenging anybody. Is, is, is there anybody here tonight in, among, among the young folks? Is there anybody here tonight that will say, Pastor, I'll accept the challenge. I, I, I'm ready. To, I'll go with the flow. I, I want to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I, I, want, I just want to see. I just want to see if there's any. Because, because I, I understand not everybody wants to. The enemy still, the, the enemy of our souls, even our flesh, okay, will try to shut us down. Okay? And, and, and I understand how peer pressure is powerful. It's powerful. You don't want to stand out. Okay? But I'm telling you, you're here, you're here in this youth ministry, you're here in this church ministry, you're here in this school ministry for a purpose. You're here to stand out. You were called to stand out. You were called to make a difference. You weren't called to be normal. You are abnormal, so quit trying to be normal. Okay? You are abnormal. You are peculiar. Amen. And the definition of peculiar is strangely wonderful. So you're strange and you're wonderful. So you might as well start. Fulfilling the role God's called you to fulfill. Fulfill your destiny. Because I'm telling you, I done released the prayer over you. Okay? So when stuff starts coming on you, and you can't help but laugh, you can't help but cry, you can't help but be overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord, some of you, He's just going to pick you up and full body slam you on the floor. <laughs> And stuff, stuff's going to happen to you, and you're going to wonder, my God, why? And you'll think, ah, Pastor told us this was coming. <laughs> this, this is that. This is that. And all I'm schooling you in the school of the Spirit is when stuff comes from the Father, it comes down on you, don't be afraid of it. Don't run from it. Go with it. I mean, go with the flow of the Holy Ghost. All right? Some of you adults are afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Go with the flow. Alright? And when you feel the atmosphere shift, and then all of a sudden, boy, boy the enemy gets up and he starts, you know, and, 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 and starts trying to disrupt or distract or, or, or he's troubling somebody's spirit or there's something going on. Be, okay? Be sensitive. Okay? If you see the intercessors kick in and start praying over something, then, my God, give them some reinforcements. They don't need you to sit there and spectate. My God, they need you to call on God. They need you to pray in the Holy Ghost. They need you to worship. That's why I had to offer keep playing. We need you to keep the atmosphere stirred up in here. Stirred up again. Amen? Anybody get this tonight? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm sitting here thinking the Lord wants to set each and every person in this place who wants to set us free. Amen. Amen. He wants to set us free. So y'all open yourselves up to the Holy Spirit and let y'all be able to talk to you. Amen. Amen. He, he really does. He really wants to set us free. From ourselves. You're your worst enemy. You're the hold up. It ain't the Holy Ghost. He's ready when you are. All you got to do is enter in. Say, Lord, I'm here. Just flood me. Fill me. Overflow me. Amen? He'll run your cup over and your saucer will get a blessing. 
Amen. Why not? That's right. Hey, listen, when you see this, if you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, get filled. Be filled. All right? Let the Holy Spirit just, just it, it ought to come up out of you like a wellspring. And let that prayer language go. All right? Now, some of you think, oh, well, I'm not going to well, the Holy Spirit's not going to come down and just grab your tongue and die, ah, 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 you start doing this. You're in control of your faculties, but what you do is you yield to the Holy Ghost. All right? And what does He want your tongue? You know why He wants your tongue? It's the last member to go. Huh? It's the deadly. It's deadly. It's capable of venom and poison. Capable of hurtful words. And the Holy Spirit, He'll sanctify. Yeah. Then when He comes in, all right, then He just, I can just see the Holy Spirit that when, when, when He feels every person, He just takes that signet ring of the king and just goes, pop! Just pops you real good. It's right there in your forehead. Just see it! Right there between your eyes. It's kind of like, y'all seen that V8 commercial, you know? And that guy's doing the sit ups, you know? He said, yeah, how's it going? He said, well, I'm, I'm doing okay. He's exercising. All of a sudden, she goes, Boom. you know, it, it's, it, they make that little knock noise. Of, Boom. He looks and he goes like this, like he's stunned. And she goes, you could have had a V8. Huh? Yeah. You could have had the Holy Ghost. You could have had a V8. You could have victory. That stands, the V stands for victory. And the H stands for new beginning. <laughs> All right? You're overcoming. Why? By the blood of the Lamb. Right? Yeah. 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 So, yes, I receive all this tonight. Don't you? Okay. Praise God. No place to the devil. Look over. Somebody, look over. Touch three people and say, no place to the devil. No place. No place. No place. No place. No place. No place. No room. No room. No room. Don't think his thoughts. Don't speak his words. Don't let any of this stuff enter into your heart. It'll start here in the mind. Okay? Holy Spirit, pray like Job prayed. Set a guard over my mouth. Put a guard over my mouth. Alright? If I'm not speaking something edifying, put a guard over it. Alright? Amen? No room for the devil. I'm going to edify. All right? I'm not going to gossip. All right? If I'm not building up my brother or sister, I'm certainly not going to run them down. Because when I do, that's place to the devil. Gossip is given place to the devil. Has no room in the body of Christ. None whatsoever. You're to build up, you're to pray for, and you're to edify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like it. I like it. Brother Bud. I, I think I need to share this. Something happened to me probably 23 years ago. And the Lord just gave me this word to be spiritually observant. And I had a ragged old pickup truck. And I thank God for it because had it not quit running in the middle of the road, I would have seen this young man in our church. Uh, this boy, he would shoot spitballs at the preacher while he was preaching. He was sad, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. when my truck quit running, I was facing him. He was in his dad's car, and he was able to tell the dad was on. And I got out and I walked over to him, and I said, Russell, seems like you had a bit of trouble here. He said, I don't want to die. I said, well, that's a good one. He said, but I don't know that. He said, I'm just so new. He said, and I know I'm new. And I said, well, let me pray for you. And I prayed for him. And I was a young Christian. And I followed the Holy Spirit. And I started praying for him. He spewed something out of his mouth. And I 
I, I hear all these things, you know, about whenever you're, you're casting a demon out, make sure there's something around to take them. You know, like in the Bible, the, the hall. Well, here in his hall, where they come from. But he spewed this out of his mouth, but I, I, I want to, this is the most important part. To give his life to the Lord, and somewhere in Knoxville, Tennessee tonight, and his wife will preach the Lord. Praise God. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Go. Don't, don't hold back. Go. That's right. If you already received. No, I have to pre- I've already received, but not now. You received. You've already received. He's going to receive. He's going. He's going to receive. You're going to give. Hallelujah. Yeah.
because we classical Pentecostals have this traditional way that we grew up seeing it done. Amen. All right? I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is doing a new thing. Amen. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Okay? All right? And and if he wants to pick them up, full body slam them, he can. But most of the time, he's drawing. He's just drawing. And he said, and he, I, listen, this, if, if you've ever heard a classical Pentecostal preacher, I grew up in this. These are my roots. The Holy Spirit is retooling, retweaking, reprogramming, how, whatever adjectives, verbs, or nouns you want to use to describe what the Holy Spirit is doing in the body of Christ. But it will be anchored to his word. He watches over his word to perform it. Okay, now when he says love them, okay, the, 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 the condemnation of the lifestyle is already there. It's already there. And they're expecting because they've seen the church preach condemnation. They already know how the Lord feels about the sin. What they want to find out is there's somebody out there that will love the person. Love the person. All right, because they're, they're, you know, I, and I, hey, I've already been through the ridicule. Oh, you're soft on sin. No, I'm not soft on sin. God's not soft on sin. Okay, but He's big on love. He's big time on love. All right, and we want to shun people. You know why? Because we don't want to get around that which is unholy. But I want to tell you something. The Holy Ghost in you is bigger than that. God's a big boy and he can handle it. What he wants to know is, can are you going to mature enough to be able to love them back into the fold, into the kingdom? All right? Because you can go ahead and heap condemnation and it just goes against the grain. Because bless God, we stood in our pulpits and we preach this stuff. But my Lord, are we going to rate a sin? We do that sometimes. You know, the big three, alcoholism, adultery, and homosexuality. The big three. Alright? But God also hates a lying tongue that strows gossip. Okay? So you don't... With sin, sin, sin with God. Okay? And Jesus died for all of it. And we need to be loving people into the kingdom of God. No matter where they are. Okay? Because there's room at the foot of the cross. The blood of Jesus. is This guy over here. I used to be afraid when we were doing bus ministry several years ago. When everybody was doing buses. Okay? Alright? I'd go to his house. You guys would go to his house. And they'd say, don't go down to that man's house. Because he'll kill you. And most of the time, he was, we'd go down there and he'd be hiding in a back bedroom somewhere. And I, he, this was no lie. He had guns. And he'd just soon shoot you as look at you. And he and I know. There's some stories. They, he's, he's hooked up with guys that have put knives to his throat and said, I'll slit your throat right now. Say another word, you're a dead man. And you talk about going through that this guy led a hard life. You want to talk about hood? This man knows the hood. You go right down there to Oakland Road, you just cross the railroad tracks. As soon as you cross the railroad tracks from the church, you're in the hood. Okay? Because they some tough people that just soon kill you as look at you across the tracks. But I'm telling you, here's a living proof, living witness, that God set this man free from alcoholism, humbled himself, put him at the foot of the cross, saved him, sanctified him, filled him with the Holy Ghost, and put a spirit of compassion in his heart for lost people. And so what I'm telling you is that the Holy Spirit can work in places and do works and do things that you and I... He'll work with people that you and I never dream. If you'll, if we will allow Him to. Okay? 
Because he was gone from here for a while. He showed up here one Sunday morning. It was a, every Sunday. We'd spend about two hours after church. Every Sunday. Well, Pastor, this has happened. This has happened. This has happened. One day I just got it. I said, bud, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Did I say that or not? I said, don't touch it again. I just want my family back. I just want them. I said, if God don't give it to you, if God don't give it back to you, it's not worth having. Because you're destroying each other the way you are right now. Every time you touch it with the flesh, you contaminate it. Leave it alone and let the Holy Spirit work. One day he walked in here and he looked like the cat that ate the canary. <laughs> he was smiling. Ear to ear. Come up to me after church. I said, Pastor, you'll never believe what happened. This was after about three months. This wasn't an overnight. You don't get a quick fix. God wants to know if you mean business. I mean, you're really willing to get down and sacrifice something. He came in here and he smiled. He said, I hadn't touched it. When I said don't touch it, I said, don't call. Don't go over. You just fast and pray and spend time within the Word of God. And you pray. Him and his wife was separated. He was living in a trailer. She was living in the, in, at the house. He looked and said, she called me. I said, she called you? I said, yeah. He said, she wants me to come home. Sell that trailer. Sell the trailer and come home. And the Lord restored. There in, every time I hear him talk, he said, I love you too. I love you, baby. I love you too. You know what? Because God did it. He inspired a spirit in them that united them together because God had a mission and a ministry for them. And they're involved in it now. You see? So don't ever count out what God's doing because He's always at work. He never stops working. He's always working in places you'll never be able to see. So let Him do His perfect work because His perfect work will reveal his perfect will. Okay? You'll see it. Something's moving. Something's moving. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Y'all receive it tonight. You see what the Lord's doing in here? He's doing it in your house. Stay connected with you. Stay connected with Jesus. Okay. says, Pastor, I'll join you. I'll be one of those that takes it by force. I'm going to pass the test. I'm, going to, I'll, I'm in there. I'm in. I'm in. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you see our hands. We lift them tonight in affirmation. We lift them in confirmation. That we are here to do kingdom business. We are here on kingdom assignments. We're here to set the captive free. We're not here to play tiddlywinks with the devil. We're not here to play around with the Holy Ghost. This is the power of God that releases the anointing 
that breaks the yoke and destroys the bondage. And tonight, with lifted hands, we declare tonight as the body of Christ, Satan is defeated, and we are taking back what he stole from every family, because they are the heritage of the Lord and the call of God in the strong name of the risen Son of God. Let it happen for your glory. And all God's church said, praise the Lord. Give it a hand clap. I Amen. Now come Sunday, put the Holy Ghost and ready to go. All right?